Now we're going to check in on bond markets. We'll head over to Fig Securities now. Simon Michelle standing by there. Uh, interested to see uh, what the, the bond market has been doing, Simon, while well, we've all been watching equities. I know yields have moved uh, a little lower as investors seek some kind of respite from this volatility. Yeah, good afternoon, Kate, and absolutely it's a good uh, good time to be in bonds at the moment with all, so all this volatility, and we're certainly seeing good demand for bonds, so yields are drifting lower. That means bond prices move higher, and that's been a relatively good outcome for bondholders since the beginning of the year. Um, I think, uh, look, you know, we're seeing that increased demand uh, on the view that, uh, you know, it's been very tough to get a return out of other markets, uh, especially over the last 12 months, and with uh, investors discounting the number of uh, likely rate increases by the US Fed, uh, you know, locking a in a yield of, uh, you know, four, five, six percent uh, seems looks pretty attractive at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. Inflation also is going to, to be pretty important at the moment and a key driver of that US Fed funds rate. Of course, we know we're expecting hikes for 2016. What are some of the key risks? Yeah, well, it's interesting. I think, uh, you know, after we got that payroll data through, yet we didn't get that uh, very good uh, improvement in wages growth there. Uh, you know, it just accentuates the uh, focus on inflation. And that inflation uh, data has been moving away from fair, where the Fed would like to see it. Its target's around 2%. Uh, and uh, so I think the uh, view we got from the Fed back in December when they did increase that uh, Fed funds rate, that we would likely see four increases by the US through 2016. The market just doesn't see that happening on this much softer inflation. Now, uh, inflation is very much impacted by uh, currency, and if we see the US dollar go higher, that's actually going to work again against the US uh, direction. It's going to uh, export inflation and uh, keep that inflation, domestic inflation, low. And uh, if we see further moves in oil and commodities, as we're seeing at the moment, again, that just removes inflation out. So uh, I think, uh, you know, the data's moving against the Fed on this inflation target and I think that just removes uh, you know the the view that uh, we're likely to see a flurry of interest rate increases and so investors are comfortable to lock in at these levels. So what have we got coming up in terms of risk events now? I guess they'll be particularly important considering the investor reaction we're seeing at the moment to, to different pieces of information. What are you keeping an eye on? I know here at home we have the unemployment numbers out later this week. Yeah we've got some employment figures out later this week in Australia. I think they'll be pretty much on the money. No real change expected there. I think we'll see that continuing stronger trend emerge, but we're like not likely to see a lot of volatility there. I think the key driver, uh, Kate, is really going to be China still, and uh, I think we've seen that just today. So I think most people are going to be looking at uh, China, looking at more of the data coming out of that. Uh, I think in relation to the US, we're going to see some earnings uh, numbers coming out as the uh, fourth quarter earnings season starts. So that will build on that narrative of if, whether we are seeing a domestic uh, st strengthening in the domestic US economy. But well, I think the bigger challenges now is the external factors, and I think they're going to be a key driver around the uh, ability for the US to, to move interest rates. So, look, I think, uh, you know, uh, locking into bonds and sitting on the sidelines <laughs> is probably not a bad place at the moment. Yeah, you guys must be laughing at the moment. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Bye-bye. Simon Michelle over there at Big Securities.